Welcome back to the channel, everyone, and our next comic book review and recap. Edward Nigma may be the one villain in Batman's rogues gallery that has gone through the most evolution and transformation over the years. In the 21st century, he's become a psychopath, a killer, prone to violence, and disassociated from normal human engagement. We've seen this in the Riddler's portrayal in 2022's The Batman with Paul Dano, and we've seen this evolution in the comics with such story arcs as Hush and The Long Halloween. But the Riddler was not always this much of a danger to the people of Gotham. Sure, he was a criminal, but the joke used to be that he was a B-list villain, not one of the big baddies like the Joker or Bane. In the 1960s, Frank Gorshin played the role of the Riddler in the campy television series and is credited for bringing the Riddler to life in the minds of the general public, making him a more popular figure than he had been. Sure, Jim Carrey played the Riddler in Batman Forever, and that is the version that lives in the heads of Generation X as THE Riddler. But was Edward Nigma always a joke? A non-threat? Someone to be dismissed as he was in the late 70s and 80s? The answer to that is no. And as proof, let's look back at his first appearance, Detective Comics number 140, from October of 1948. We are first introduced to a young Edward Nigma who cheats at a school competition which involves being the fastest to put together a jigsaw puzzle. The admiration and notoriety that comes with this false victory only encourages Nigma to become a puzzle expert and an expert at conning others by challenging them to a battle of wits over who can solve any given puzzle. And of course, it's all rigged. But as Nigma becomes bored with the charade and with the minuscule amount of money he makes by doing it, he decides to focus on committing crimes, challenging the police to a battle of wits, and yes, to baffling even the Batman. In that moment of inspiration, the Riddler is born. His first riddle comes in the form of a crossword puzzle displayed in lights across a Gotham skyscraper. The Riddler leaves three clues. One, a water utensil. Two, a public way. Three, a formal dinner. Batman and Robin quickly deduce that the answers are basin, street, and banquet. Therefore, the Riddler must be targeting the mayoral banquet on Basin Street. But when the Batman arrives, he's told that there is no Riddler there. Never was. Then he's told that the bank across the street is flooding. He has been fooled. Banquet also sounds like bank wet. The Riddler has flooded the bank vault, broken into it using a diving helmet, and escaped through the sewers as the water's drained. The next crime the Riddler puts into action involves a giant jigsaw puzzle delivered to police headquarters. Batman and Robin use a football field to assemble it and reveal the clue. Tonight, I shall rob the Eagle's Nest. An Eagle's Nest is also called an Airy, which is also the name of a nightclub at the top of a skyscraper in Gotham City. That must be the target. So Batman leaves Robin to monitor the nightclub as he goes to follow another hunch. Our next panel shows us the Riddler robbing the mansion of millionaire Harrison Eagle. The Batman surprises the Riddler, but Nigma has a surprise of his own. He gives Batman a choice, chase after him or save the life of Harrison Eagle, who is inside an elaborate steel trap and gagged to the point of suffocation. The Batman chooses to save Harrison and solves the Riddler's puzzle. It is clear that the Riddler is not just playing games at this point. Human life means nothing to him as long as he reaches his goal. Edward Nigma was a psychopath from the beginning. The third crime that Nigma puts into motion necessitates his stealing of a giant fake piece of corn, placing it on a tractor bed and having it speed down a busy street with no one at the wheel. As it threatens to kill dozens, the Batmobile collides with the tractor bed and stops it from harming anyone. Only then does Batman read the riddle left with the corn. Why is corn hard to escape from? The answer? Because it is maze. M-A-I-Z-E. The wordplay does not escape Batman this time. The dynamic duo speed to the carnival on the Gotham Pier, where there is a glass maze set up for customers to try their luck at solving it. Our duo enter, only to be trapped inside by the Riddler who has rigged the game, sealing up any entrance and leaving no way out. As well, there's a bomb that will detonate in 30 minutes, destroying the maze and anyone in it. Batman tells Robin to rip up the carpet under their feet. He rolls it up, places it next to the metal frame that holds the glass panes in place, lights it on fire, and watches as the heat expands the metal, allowing the Batman to kick out a pane of glass just in time. The Riddler, however, has not left. He wanted to see the Batman and Robin die in a fiery blast, except now he had to run to the end of the pier to escape capture. And when he realizes that he's in danger, it is too late. The bomb detonates, the Riddler's body sinks into the harbor, only a question mark floats to the surface, either detached from the Riddler's costume, or maybe it's a message to the Batman that he's not seen the last of this new foe. And that's how it ends. The Riddler does return two issues later in Detective Comics number 142, but it is this initial appearance that readers fell in love with. It is this initial appearance that proves that, from the very beginning, Edward Nigma was just as much of a killer and criminal mastermind in 1948 as he is in the 21st century. And that's what I think 
Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Where do you rank the Riddler amongst Batman villains? Who played your favorite on TV or on film? And if you want more comic goodness, click on the thumbnails at the end for access to my comic verse playlist. As always, I am still your reluctant gringo. Thank you for watching. And from south of the border, salut and a huevo.